the occultist mixes black and death metal very well. Um, but on this one so far, I'm getting purely melodic death metal vibes. So last time I said that I would be checking out more brand new music from Occultist, and today is that day. Death to Your Breed, official music video, first time reaction. I'm really excited for the new album and really can't wait to finally listen to the whole thing after this reaction. But first, like, comment, and subscribe. Follow my socials linked down below and check out my Patreon also linked down below for perks and bonus content and a special tier, tier 4, that lets you make a song request and push it to the head of the line, guaranteeing a reaction to it right away. Alright, Death to Your Breed, official video clip, let's check it out. Already getting death metal vibes on this one. Love the tempo. Okay, initial thoughts right off the bat. I gotta say, usually Occultist mixes black and death metal very well. Um, but on this one so far, I'm getting purely melodic death metal vibes. And it's really working for the song so far. Again, I really like that fast-paced tempo. And I like the way that her vocal delivery is matching that speed. I think, you know, this might be something that I haven't brought up before, but I think that it takes talent to begin with to do harsh vocals. But on top of that, to really belt them out at a fast-paced speed without losing a beat and without, you know, losing energy. Uh, I think it probably takes a lot out of you and it probably takes even more talent and really a lot of control over your voice. So much respect to her for that. And I also really like the, uh, the bite that the guitar has to it. So really good so far. We're off to a great start. This is a song that they have to play live. That shuggy guitar, man. I love the guitar work right here. It's so fast-paced and so hooky. Uh, this is like, again, I'm going to say it again, they have to play this at one of their shows or every show. This is something that I can just picture like people going crazy for. Um, this is such a banger of a song so far. Um, I think it's like the most aggressively fast-paced song that I've heard from them up to this point. Really well done so far. And I also see this Reaper figure in the video. And I also watched the Omen teaser. I didn't react to that one, but I just watched it. Um, and it had similar imagery. So I'm wondering if all these videos, when put together, are telling one seamless story. Uh, if so, that's really cool. I like when bands do that. Um, otherwise, for the rest of the video, it's just the band playing. Um, but the music is really speaking for itself so far. Let's continue. <laughs> A lot of volume and dimension to her harshness here. He's still. Oh, that's a classic death metal soloing right there. This has such a, like, Gothenburg 
kind of mellow death vibe to it. It's really cool. Um, it's just, and the heaviness just doesn't let up. I, I really like when the song just starts out with breakneck speed and pure heaviness and just stays that way throughout the duration of the song. And it doesn't lose momentum. If anything, it gains momentum as it goes along. And I very much think that's what this song is doing. And that's totally owed to the guitar work, which is fantastic. And of course, Beatrice's harsh vocals. Um, again, I like the range she's showing. Uh, it's subtle, but there was a, a switch up that she did where she got a little bit more ferocious sounding with her growls. Uh, so that was really cool to hear. Uh, yeah, pure talent is on display here and I'm loving this. All right, I'm going to say something potentially controversial here, but hear me out. So, you know how like breakdowns kind of serve the purpose in deathcore of like making for like a powerful transitionary moment and it kind of builds up the song. Um, and it's also something that just has a lot of like rhythm to it that you could just really headbang to. Um, it's really just a moment for you to get lost in the music and prepare yourself, uh, get really amped up for the next part. Um, so I... It, you know, and then they bring it back with like the harshes and like the nasty gutturals. Usually, um, there's usually something rewarding at the end of a breakdown. It's like a lead up to something. I feel like the slow down parts. Obviously, they weren't pure breakdowns, but what they served, the purpose they served in this song, was similar. They had that anticipatory feeling. They were more or less the connective tissue, and then the song sped back up again, and the momentum came right back in. I mean, I really liked how they did that. Those little parts at the end were unexpected, but I think they were. Uh, very welcome additions. Uh, subtle, but they played uh, a certain role in, you know, further building up the excitement and enhancing the song itself. Um, so that was really cool. Everything the guitar was doing was insanely awesome. Uh, purely classical death metal soloing, in my opinion, um, but in a very melodic sense. Uh, and again, I got the definitive, absolute vibe of like Gothenburg Melodeath. Like just those bands from that era, from that scene. Uh, it just reminded me of that in certain parts of this with what the guitar was doing. Of course, uh, the harsh vocals were uh, uh, fantastic in their range and in their depth and in the control that she has over her voice and her ability to switch her voice up while not losing any energy and while not losing any ferociousness um, and in ways that, are again, are very subtle that if you don't really pay attention, you may not notice them. But she started out more maybe a little bit more shrieky at the beginning of the song. And then toward the middle, I feel like she got a little bit more bestial, a little bit more growling. Um, and uh, I think that she, by and large, used more of a death metal approach for her arches in this song. Like I said, this feels more like a purely melodic death metal song um, rather than a blackened death metal song. Um, but there were parts of it where she still maintained like what I consider to be her signature black metal style harshes. So there was like a little trickle of that in here. Um, but yeah, this was really well done. I mean, I wish I could say more, but it, it was just so engaging in such a fast and energizing way. And uh, it really amped up me in terms of my energy levels. Uh, I started out doing this reaction a little bit on the tired side, but this kind of, uh, it, it was a little bit better than caffeine. I'll say that much because um, it dialed up my energy level. And uh, this was a welcome addition to my day hearing this. So I'm very glad that I checked this one out. Musically, it was just excellent. I have nothing to complain about, nothing to criticize. This band is, in my opinion, a very underrated band that should be in the spotlight more. Um, they're just like a hidden gem of a band. And the fact that more people don't know about them kind of blows my mind a bit. But hopefully with this new record, they're going to get more exposure because they definitely deserve it. I think these guys are really onto something special here. And every song that I've heard by them, I have ended up loving. Like, their whole reinventing evil record. Like I keep spinning that over and over again. Like it's just, I keep replaying those songs just last night. I was listening to them. Um, cause it's just so good. It's like, they're quickly becoming a favorite of mine. And, uh, this song is just cements them in that category for me. So, uh, 
really, really cool. The music is great. Now let's get to the lyrics. And they put them in the pinned comment beneath the video, which I always love when bands do that. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a rare kind. There was a realm already alive. Spreading in the darkness, feeding on your madness, trying to claim their power with your life. You were the disease, hypocrisy, as a motherfucking living breed. You, the disgrace of your own kind, who walks on earth fucking blind, narcissist in fucking disguise, who preys on those who are kind. What makes you think holier than thou? You think you're God, you're nothing but a clown. In your piss of a life, you will drown, and I'll see you around. You may think you're smart, but the devil is smarter. You think you're sleek, but you're playing with fire. You can try to run, you can try to hide. But you're fooling no one, for the truth will always arise. You live and breathe a fake reality, as you'd expect from the weak. Uh, I can't wait to see what you'll get. Face the truth, fear the regret. You put death out of business, as you choke in your own sickness. Once upon a time, there was a rare kind who thought they'd get away with their lives. lies. I'm just here to tell the tale of how they failed, so bad that they had to beg for their demise. Hypocrite. Do you hear me, or should I repeat? Should I spell it out, or should I repeat? Hypocrite. So I think this is probably about people who either are powerful, or who think they're powerful, basically hurting and taking advantage of the vulnerable. Uh, it's people who have no integrity, who are out for themselves, and only place value on themselves in relation to, really, to how they hurt others, you know, and that's how they gauge their own sense of self-worth. And it's really sad, it's really pathetic, but there's tons of people out there who do this. And that's the basic ingredient for narcissism, which these lyrics do mention. And I think this translates on two levels, because on a massive level, you have tons of corrupt people who are in power and who operate this way and cause so much destruction in the world. And then on a smaller everyday level, you have supposedly normal people who act this way, whether it's a family member, a relationship, a colleague, a roommate. I think most people know at least one person who's a narcissist and who has a need for control and manipulation. Really, who is just a toxic personality. And I won't go too deeply into the social media aspect because I've touched upon it very often on this channel, but I do think that it amplifies that kind of behavior for people who already are that way. And it gives them a voice and it gives them a platform to pretend that they're more important than they are. And it gives them a virtual megaphone to scream into when they really don't deserve one. So it complicates it, definitely, and probably worsens it, you know, and... I think the breed being described in the lyrics can refer to people in any realm of power or influence, whether it's average people or world leaders and corporate CEOs and warmongers, basically people who think that they're above others in the sense that they can step on and destroy their lives, all to give themselves the false impression that they're powerful and great. You know, and again, I'll word this a little bit differently, but when you measure your own success by the failures of others or by how you treat or mistreat others. That's not good. That's not a way to define your self-worth and your value. Um, and if you think that that's value, you're making excuses for yourself and you're not confronting the real problems that you have to deal with and taking responsibility for yourself. You're just putting up a big invisible wall between yourself and your feelings and the truth about who you really are. And you'll do anything to keep that invisible wall up, up to and including hurting other people. So... You know, and they have to keep that delusion going because deep down they hate themselves. So, and I think that I can shed some new light on this conversation because I've talked about this before on the channel, these types of people and this kind of behavior. And I always say that one of the best ways to deal with them is to ignore them, to shut them down, to not entertain their behavior and to not allow it into your life as much as you can. You know, if it's a coworker or someone you have to live with, it's more difficult, but Try your best to exclude them from your immediate sphere of what affects you emotionally and psychologically. And, you know, I maintain that policy, but we also have to admit that when left unchecked, these people, their ambition and their drive for control of others, it often has a ripple effect on society. And so it's like, what happens when narcissists become religious leaders and cult leaders and corrupt politicians? Well, then it makes a lot of sense why we've got war-crazed and money-crazed people wreaking havoc on the world, you know? And by the world, I mean everyone, themselves included. And the lyrics allude to that. It says, 
I'm just here to tell the tale of how they failed so bad they had to beg for their own demise. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, it's surprising how many problems in life stem from people who are insecure. It really is. And if you think about it, every bully who menaced someone else, who caused problems for someone else, uh, who tormented someone else, probably did so because on some level they were insecure, trying to cover for their own insecurities instead of taking responsibility for themselves. And criminals and religious charlatans and corrupt politicians are, in my opinion, they're like the final big boss level of bullies. And of course, when the song talks about hypocrites, it especially makes me think about you know, religious zealots because you've got everything from the televangelists to the mega church pastors who try to sell people their own delusions um, about who they are. That's really what it is at the end of the day. Not only are they trying to sell you, you know, bullshit when it comes to their religion, but they're trying to sell you delusions, I think, that they really perceive, like things that they really believe um, or that they have to make themselves believe as much as they possibly can. And usually it's the people who are the loudest, who are the most vocal, who are carefully choreographing every great thing that they do and have to keep reminding everyone about how good they are constantly, 24-7, it's those people who often have something to hide. Because if you really have the best interests of other people or the world at heart, you shouldn't have to scream your morality into a megaphone constantly to remind people of how great you are. And this especially is what toxic people do. They try and convince people that they're so upstanding and so great and what they're doing is so great and that they have that person's best interests at heart, even as they're mistreating that person and even as they're gaslighting that person. And very often when it comes to a massive scale, even as they're causing mass destruction and you know chaos in the world. And so I think the breed that this song talks about, it's all about hypocrites. It's all about charlatans, the corrupt and the powerful, people who are just toxic on multiple levels. Again, whether that's in day-to-day -day life or on the larger scale of things. And so I think that the best way to deal with people like this on a larger scale is to just expose them for who they really are. And, you know, this song is an example of how to do that. Art is not only a great way to talk about yourself and to express yourself, but it's also a great medium for talking about other people and, if necessary, holding them accountable. And people need to be held accountable. And as much as, you know, the online world especially can be an additional tool in the arsenal of these horrible people to do terrible things and to cause damage to society and the world... It can also be a positive tool for good people to shed light on what these people are doing and to really expose these people and force them to be held accountable for their actions. And I think that a large part of that is within the world of art and specifically within the realm of music. Um, you know, when a band or an artist says something and people really pay attention and they're moved by the music and they say, look, I want to read the lyrics and see what the song is actually discussing, and they really think about the song meaning. There's a lot of power there for positive change and for influence. Um, and, you know, that's one of the great benefits for me when I break down the lyrics in these videos is that I get the chance to talk about the song meaning and what it's trying to put out into the world and what message that it has. And if this song is talking about what I think it is, then that message is really on point and I definitely respect it. Um, so, yeah, just all around, a band that continues to impress me and continues to surprise me that they are not as popular as they deserve to be but hopefully that changes soon and of course i'm going to leave any relevant links to them uh probably in a pinned comment beneath this video or in the description uh so look, just look down below if you want to check out their merch their music uh definitely important to support the upcoming bands that you enjoy and uh i can't wait to hear the rest of the new record uh, really excited for this um such a great band I really like this song, and I don't even know where it ranks. Like, I can't necessarily say that it's my favorite, because I feel like every song lately by them is a favorite for me. This record, I think, dials up the aggression, the speed, and the intensity from the previous album. So, they're progressing and evolving in a really exciting way, and that's cool to see. And to be a small part of that journey as a reactor, as a music reviewer, uh, is a really cool experience, and I uh, hope it continues. So, that's pretty much it. My music review, my lyrical breakdown... I uh, can't wait to re-listen to this song. It's definitely going on a playlist, and I'll probably be re-listening to it tonight along with the rest of the new record, finally. Uh, so that's about it. If you made it this far, I really appreciate that. Again, go show Occultist your support and tell them Blake X sent you. 
And in the meantime, much more content is on the way. Much love and respect to the nuclear family, and I will catch you all very soon. <laughs>